NumPy package provides basic functions for manipulating large arrays and matrices of numerical data. The SciPy package extends the functionality of NumPy. To be specific, SciPy is a library that uses NumPy for more mathematical functions. SciPy uses NumPy's arrays as the basic data structure and comes with modules for various commonly used tasks, such as linear algebra, integration, ordinary differential equations, and signal processing. In this video, we will use SciPy Fast Fourier Transform Pack to show you how to compute the one-dimensional discrete Fourier transform and also the inverse discrete Fourier transform. Just a bit background of Fourier transform. It is used to convert signal from time domain into the frequency domain. By doing so, it does not only allow us to check the signal's behavior in the frequency domain, but also allow us to perform some function such as filtering that would be otherwise not possible to be performed in time domain. Because of such powerful capability, Fourier transform finds its application in disciplines such as signal and noise processing, image processing, and audio signal processing. And SciPies offer fast Fourier transform pack that allow us to compute the fast Fourier transform. In this video, I will create a side wave with random noise, and then I will show you how to remove the word noise in the frequency domain by using the FFT pack. So first of all, let's import the NumPy and also the FFT pack from the SciPy. And then let us create a side wave with random noise. So first of all, we need to set up a time step for the side wave. And then we need to create a time vector that contains all of these steps under this side wave. So for each of the time step, we have a time vector that have the value from zero to 10. And then in between, we have a 0 0.05 for increment for each of the time step so and then we can just uh, set up a side wave by using the numpy doc side and then by using the numpy uh, pi function and then times the uh, time vector that we just um, create so First of all, let me uh, hide this row first and then print out the time vector for you to understand what we've just done. So here you can see that uh, we just create a time vector that from zero to um, 9.95 and then with the time step 0 0.05 for each of the uh, time sequence. And then let me show you these two, what is the two times pi times the time vector. And this is other, these are the radiance value that we are going to pass inside this uh, numpy dot psi function. Remember, this is a radian value. And then let me show you the results. Here we need to uh, run off it in order to have a better illustration of the results. So these are the values uh, after the um, psi functions. So you can see that for every five step, uh, we have a, a quarter of the cycle. And then, so every five step, we have another quarter of the cycle. So as a result, it takes about um, 
20 steps in order for us to generate one cycle. Since we have um, 200 points uh, from this uh, time vector, that means we will have about two ci 10 cycles right here. Uh, to have a better illustration, we do not, uh, I just try not to have too many cycles right here. So I uh, also create a value right here called period and then divide it by the period. That means we are going to um, create more points for each of the cycle. Uh, because we divide it by five, that means we are going to have a 100 points for one cycle. So that means right here, because we have 200 points originally, so that means right here we will have a two cycle. So similarly, what, what I mean is that we are going to have a 100 points here in order for us to have a complete cycle. And then because we have a 200 points originally that we set in this time vector, so that means we are going to have two full cycle right here in this side, side wave. So the next thing that I would like to have is to add some noise to this side wave. So right here, I just add a, by using um, random.wen to generate some additional noise to each of the each of the time vector point. So uh, we have a time vector on same size. Uh, however, if you remember that um, the psi function, um, the output of the psi function is uh, values between negative one to positive ones. On the other hand, um, the random noise uh, or the when when n is a normal distributed um, values with mean zero and variance one. So in order to avoid the uh, too much the ramping up or ramping down created by this random noise, we will just uh, multiply it by 0 0.25 to reduce a um, the value um, the value of the noise. That's good. So right now we should be ready to perform the fast Fourier transform. So first of all, we just um, take out the sign uh, FFT here, and then we use the pack that is the FFT Fourier transform of this side function. And then we can actually get the amplitude uh, by using the absolute value of this psi Fourier transform. And we can also um, create a power spectrum by, uh, by the power tool of the amplitude. And we can also use the numpy angle function to get the phase spectrum of this uh, Fourier transform value. So this is the power, and then this is the angle uh, spectrum. That's good. And then for each of the amplitude and power, there should be um, a corresponding frequency. So in order for us to 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 have the sampling frequency, uh, we can use the FFT pack to generate that uh, by using the FFT FLEQ function. So here we need to input the window size, that is the six box size, and then we also need to input the sample spacing that should be equals to our time step. So this will return the sampling frequency or the corresponding frequency for each of the uh, magnitude or power. So let's take a look um, to see what we have in the amplitude and also the sampling frequency. So
So these are the value for each of the um, corresponding frequency. Say, for example, this should be the uh, zero frequency. We have this 0 0.27 something value. And then 0 0.1, we have this, uh, yes, 0 0.1 we have 6.5 something, and then 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so and so. And then you can see that these are the magnitude, that, uh, sorry, um, these are the amplitude for each of the corresponding frequency uh, representing in this um, frequency, uh, sample frequency uh, array. Because we would like to remove the noise, so the peak frequency um, that contains the uh, peak amplitudes are what we concern. So, so first of all, right here, we can actually uh, stat them first. I mean, stat the amplitude and frequency for, together first. Um, sampling frequency. You use a NumPy array to stat them. So once we stat them, we try to find out the peak frequency right here. The peak frequency means that um, the frequency um, that we have the peak amplitude. So we just um, try to extract the first row right here and then find out the sequence which uh, Let me type it first. So here we just um, try to find out the maximum uh, amplitude arguments, the position of this maximum amplitude. Um, so let me, uh, I don't want to make it too complex. So um, let me say this is the maximum value position that is equals to these um, arguments right here. This is the, um, this will return you the positions of the maximum amplitude. And then we just um, put it back to the maximum amplitude in order um, to this uh, M frequency uh, array in order for us to extract the sample frequency um, that is corresponding to this uh, maximum position. So let's print out the maximum amplitude first. That is the position of the maximum amplitude, amplitude and then print out uh, print out the corresponding frequency. So the maximum amplitude position is at array, the front numbers of the array, and then that the, the corresponding frequency is 0 0.2. So once we have this peak magnitude uh, the, or the peak positions, we can remove the values, uh, the amplitudes that after um, there are after this uh, peak sequence. So say for example, right here, we just uh, copy the um, the side functions that is after the Fourier transform right here. And then we, what we, try to do here is to remove all the value uh, or I should say assign all the values um, that this uh, 
that the corresponding frequency is larger than the peak frequency. So here is the corresponding frequency. Uh, so if there's larger than the peak frequency, we will assign it to zero. So let me show you um, the results. So here you can see only the corresponding frequency is less than or equals to 0 0.2. Their magnitudes are remaining in are remained in this uh, array. So by then we can have a filtered psi function in time domain. by using this um, inverse Fourier transform function. So here you can see that by removing all the amplitudes that have a corresponding frequency that is larger than this um, peak frequency, and then by, inverse, by applying this inverse Fourier transform function, and then we can get back a nice sinusoidal curve. So now you can see that by combining the uh, fast Fourier transform and inverse fast Fourier transform, we can remove the noise uh, in the frequency domains that would be otherwise not possible to be performed in the time domain. And that's it. I hope now you have a better understanding of the fast Fourier transform pack in SciPy. And thank you for watching.